I'm Lauren Herrera, owner of Pilates Barbell Club in Pasadena, California, where we teach you how to effectively reach your health and fitness goals in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of effort with the highest payoff of a strong, sexy, reliable body to last a lifetime. I'm here today with Dr. Roxanne Prelutsky, also known as Dr. Rox. She is a clinical psychologist and she is helping us dive a little bit deeper into our mindset about our health and fitness goals. So thank you so much, Dr. Rox, for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lauren. All right, so first question. Dr. Rox, how can a psychologist be helpful in someone's health and fitness goals? Well, as you've mentioned, Lauren, Mindset is a really important thing here um, when you start an exercise and fitness program. And since yours is so unique in that it not only balances nutrition and fitness, but it also emphasizes mindset, that's really a space that I could fill and help a person develop a balanced mindset. Um, you know, we have to think about what we want our health, what kind of foundation we want our health to stand on. Um, you know, if we think about a foundation of a house. We want it to be strong and sturdy. We want for it to have, you know, a very good uh, base. And from that base, a, a good house can be built, a house that can weather storms. Mindset is an important thing to be able to see the world through a balanced lens. So as a psychologist, um, number one, I think about the why why we go into this health and fitness program. Is it just to lose weight? Is it to become healthy? We have to think about the things that are gonna maintain our health. So that's one of the pieces to build a solid foundation. Another is not to make this an extension of your desperation, but more an extension of a balanced mindset. And when we think about a desperate act, it tends to be short-lived it tends to stem from pain, and as soon as we hit that relief, it tends not to really maintain itself. And that's exactly like when so many people go on a diet, and you said that you're you're like in the deprivation mode, you hit the relief, mm -hmm. and then you're like, I've arrived, yeah. now I can go back to eating everything that I was eating before. So it's exactly the, the, the mindset to weather the storm, which is weather life's cultural maybe interactions or stress interactions so that you can like weave your way through different times of eating different foods or more food versus deprive 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 and then not know what to do because you're not going to want to go to a wedding or or go to a party and then oh, no i can't eat it so is there one thing you would say to anyone starting a health and fitness program Absolutely, and you know, I just tapped into it, which was the support system. When I talk about a support system, I'm talking about recruiting a group of people or one person that is supporting your health visions. It's the people who are going to support where you're going and who you are. That might be faith-based organization, it might be a support group, it might be friends or family who get it, and who are going to support you in your goals. Are there any strategies to avoid the self-sabotage? What would we do like if we're just all by ourselves? How yeah. would we stop sabotaging ourselves? Yeah, and it's kind of a, it's an interesting question because as I look at sabotage, I see it very much as a symptom to, um, you know, maybe a moment of disconnectedness with ourselves. Maybe there's an indication of too much too soon. So what, whatever that is, we have to check in with ourselves with the sabotage. The easiest route is to minimize opportunities for sabotage. So in other words, sometimes it's easier to prevent the storm by doing things like meditation and things that are going to lower your stress threshold to begin with. Because stress, boredom, all those, you know, a lot of feelings can affect our sabotage and also poor sleep. Poor sleep is a very big one because our mindfulness isn't quite there. Sometimes we just have to ride the wave and uh, you know we sabotage, now what? So that's where that strong foundation comes in and seeing it as a setback and seeing it as life and immediately forgiving ourselves and seeing that as part of the process. 
You know, this program is 21 days where we're submerging everybody in lots of information about mindset, nutrition, and movement. So, day 21, we've arrived, and now we're going to go back to where we were. How are we going to have continued success after these 21 days? Well, maintenance is a very important thing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, research shows and brain scans show that behavior changes the brain. Back when I worked with um, OCD in a very intensive way, currently I also treat OCD, uh, we actually collaborated with um, people who did, at UCLA, who did brain scans of pre, during, and post treatment. And we found that behavioral treatment alone changed brain activity, it changed the neural pathways, and it strengthened the healthier brain. And that was actually shown in the brain scan. So, so too, behavior changes the brain. 21 day is a good amount of time. It generally takes three weeks to, st to start setting a habit. It's important for us to trust ourselves that we have made a dent, we have made a change, and to support those changes, and it will become more natural. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This was really cool to have a scientific approach to the choices that we're making and maybe affirmations that we're doing and um, just the, these little changes. We, I feel like this is really, like, this is proven. Yeah. We've gone through this with so many people Absolutely. on all different focuses, not just health and fitness and, um, and losing weight. So thank you You're so much. Welcome. Sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our newsletter.